Cycling is a sport which has always embraced technology, and now it's taken the ultimate leap into the virtual world. Zwift is an online platform that allows amateur and professional cyclists to train and compete against one another. Its popularity has soared during the pandemic, and now it has more than 3 million subscribers. By putting a normal, everyday bike on a smart trainer, basically a treadmill for a bike with a Bluetooth connection, a rider's real-life physical output is converted into a moving avatar. In Zwift, the resistance levels automatically change depending on gradients and conditions, and there's a whole host of other tech that can help add to the realism. The more advanced trainers simulate going over cobbles or through dirt tracks, and there are even fans that can match the wind speed to how fast you're cycling. But once you're plugged in, all you need to do is start pedaling. You can join a group ride, do a workout, or simply cruise around some of the best routes in the world with maps, stats, and data. So to see what all the fuss was about, I thought I'd get stuck in. The plan? To get fit enough so that in five weeks, I could take part in a race on Zwift. And in order to do that, I recruited Matt Rowe, a professional cycling coach who trains people through Zwift. It is the future for, for sure for training and that's for amateur cyclists who have got kind of four or five hours a week uh, right through to the professional ranks. I mean uh, indoor training, the, uh, the benefits that it brings to performance gains speaks volumes. Now there's one key metric that seems to be the lifeblood of Swift, and that's watts. Put it like this, your TV needs about 250 watts to work. An Olympic gold medalist Bradley Wiggins broke the hour cycling record by generating an hour average of 440 watts just with his legs. Swift builds itself as a training platform and unlike many sports, this setup can actually replicate many aspects of cycling with genuine road speeds and conditions, meaning that all the data you gather is comparable to what you get in real life. So Matt has set me a test tonight to see how fit I am. Basically, it's to see how hard I can push myself and how many watts I could generate. So I've got my screen down here where I can see the training plan that I've got to do and what he's going to put me on. Uh, it's 45 minutes and it looks pretty brutal. At the moment I'm doing 167 watts or thereabouts. It's done my legs. I'm really, really starting to hurt now. That was one of the hardest things I have done for a long time. I mean, look at me, it's just horrendous. Certainly, I had some work to do. And the training carried on five days a week for five weeks. But while you can train hard and make real gains, it feels like competition is the pinnacle of Zwifting. It's where Zwift goes to the next level, both for the users and for the company itself. Suddenly, the platform switches from being training focused to something more akin to an esports platform. You can select a race, turn up at the right time, and you're suddenly on the starting line with a huge group of other riders. And if you're good, there's serious money to be made from winning. I've heard from several Zwifters who say, oh, there's a, I made more money on this one Zwift race than I've ever made in any outdoor race that I've ever done. There's been some big cash prizes. At December's UCI Cycling Esports World Championships, the prize money was almost $10,000 for the winners. Incredibly, female cyclists can make more money from winning races in Zwift than in real life. So after five weeks of training, for five days a week, the time had come. It was race day. At 12.30 on a Tuesday afternoon, the race began. And I had Matt there on Zoom to coach me through. That's the most painful thing I've ever done. That was, I mean, it was genuinely really fun. There's a real kind of thrill of racing. Well, it must be unique to, uh, to, to Zwift. If parents are worried about kids doing too much gaming at home, then get them on this because they'll get fit. And honestly, you can't do it for more than 45 minutes or you'll like fall over. But it was time to hear the results. Five weeks ago, I had a functional threshold power of 233 watts. So, had the training worked? Today, for 38 minutes, we've done 288 watts. 
Wow. Or you send it for an extra, extra 30, 30 odd watts, 34 watts. You send it for nearly twice the amount of time. Gosh. It's, it's a huge spike. That's a massive increase, isn't it? That's a massive increase. Out of 42 riders, you were 14th. Hey! Good result. You've ha got to be happy with that. There's what we call a couple of sandbaggers in the group. There's two riders that were I mean, minutes ahead of third place in the seas. There were two guys in the race in my category, category C, who were considerably faster than everyone else. In fact, they came first and second by um, with a minute between the third place. And it's these guys who essentially are category A riders. They're really fast, really light, really powerful, competing in lower categories. You know, I, I came 14th, but it sounds like I could have actually come 12th. Uh, and I feel a little bit like, I don't know, I feel a little bit cheated. Perhaps where there's competition, there's always going to be cheating. And professional cycling has had its fair share of scandals. And now Zwift is having to deal with digital performance enhancement and other methods of manipulation. But as I began to find out more about cheating on Zwift, one name kept coming up. Well, this I, I can say this guy's name, Cam Jeffers, because he it was all over the news anyway. I don't like to be compared to, to Lance Armstrong. And I don't think it's fair to compare him to Lance Armstrong. In 2019, cyclist and YouTuber Cameron Jeffers took part in and won the inaugural British e-racing championships in London on Zwift. But shortly after the race, he was given a six month suspension from all racing after British cycling ruled he had breached its disciplinary code during championships. I got a call one day from, from British Cycling saying that they've had a, an anonymous complaint that my bike wasn't legit. And I was like, you what? <laughs> Come and check the bike if you want. I don't know what you're on about. Zwift said the charge related to Jeffers using a bot to ride for him to unlock a special biking game, thus giving him an unfair advantage over his competitors. Jeffers claims that he obtained a bike for a series of YouTube videos he was making earlier in the year rather than for the race. The qualifiers, I remember, I remember saying to a couple of people like, do you not think, you know, should I not be using a bike that I've legitimately unlocked? And, and they, you know, they said that, that there's been, you know, there's no, there's no rule book, there's no rules been written for this event. So, you know, there's no way you can get disqualified for using a bike that you haven't legitimately, you know, obtained. But just like in any sport, there's a battle between those regulating and those trying to gain an advantage. Cheers. Let me say this. It was fair that they took it away from him, but I think he could have won without the Tron bike. So that's the sad thing. Zwift are cracking down on any attempts to cheat in their races with the support of global cycling governing bodies. If the platform wants to be taken seriously, it has to maintain its sporting integrity. I think uh, cheating is, um, is probably something we'll have to combat. It will never go away. Someone will figure out how to game the system. But having said that, there are things that we know we can do, uh, including hardware. So for example, the World Championships this year, uh, everyone will be on the same bit of equipment. In addition to real-world anti-doping controls that bar the use of performance-enhancing drugs, there will also be a group of analysts monitoring riders' race data for any red flags when compared to their previous performance stats. After just five weeks of using the platform, I got so much fitter, but really I was hooked and it was the social element and the gamification that kept me coming back. People were showing up not for training. They were showing up because they crave that social connection. If I think about what uh, Zwift could be, it's certainly much larger than, than bike racing um, as a community. If it's a gamified training tool or an esports platform, Zwift has hit upon something which has resonated with cyclists. And key to this is the fervent community that is building with YouTubers, live streamers, online trainers, and social groups. Mm -hmm.